Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to another video. The Pentium 4 we're gonna work on today. You might have seen it in a previous pickups video, a donation by Morgan. We had two desktops and we did a recently a teardown video of the Pentium 3 with a bit of cleaning. But today it's all about this Pentium 4. It comes in white, doesn't seem to be anything special about it, but you never know what's inside. Usually there's always something interesting or useful. So let's find out what's inside of this machine. So at the front we can see a floppy drive and an optical drive and also two front panel fan cooling contraptions. We will have a closer look at those later. Looking at the back of the unit it's a lot more interesting. It's got all sorts of video stuff. Seems to be some capture or CCTV system or something similar. I hopped on eBay and I found an air blower for $30. So look, that's cheap enough to just give it a go. And here is the box and how it arrived. There's not much to it. You basically just put the nozzle uh, at the front. The unit can also be switched into a vacuum cleaner mode, but I'm just gonna use it as a blower. So I put the case outside and you can see me blowing the dirt and the dust out of it. Now I live in regional Australia, basically it's a desert, so it's not so much dust that's inside of these machines, it's really dirt, it's like a reddish uh, sand type of dirt. And the blower, yeah, it did a reasonable job. Um, I think the value is fine for $30, I can't complain. It got rid of most of the dirt, but not everything, so uh, I still had to manually uh, clean some of the components. Uh, like I showed in the previous cleaning video. So let's have a look if the PC actually works. Well, it didn't even turn on and on the motherboard there's actually a power LED that lights up if power is supplied. So I think the power supply is just dead. So let's go ahead and rip this machine apart. So here we've got a standard optical drive. So this is one of the five and a quarter inch hard drive cooling devices with three fans at the front. And there's another one for a three and a half inch drive bay. So the machine came with two hard drives. There was initially a 40 gig drive, but I've already pulled it out to use in another project. And the secondary hard drive is a 120 gigabyte hard drive. So I'm super excited about this. This is the perfect size for Windows 98. So the power supply is likely dead. So this has to go. I'm not gonna keep it. It goes straight into the bin. We also have two PCI capture cards. This is the first one. It's got four video inputs and one output. And this is the second PCI capture card. This one has four inputs with BNC connectors, but it comes with adapters to RCA. So all in all, this machine had eight video inputs, which is quite interesting. And here we've got a motherboard. It's an AOPEN MX46533GN with the SIS chipset. All this stuff is online, BIOS, manual driver, so that's really handy and the capacitors are in very good condition. I um, also found the latest BIOS and look, you guys know me already, if it's got a BIOS chip on it, I will always flash the latest BIOS. The BIOS flashing worked through Windows, so I tried it with the Windows utility this time and that worked just fine. The CPU is a Pentium 4 running at 2.66 GHz with 512 KB of cache and 533 MHz of effective FSB with the Norfolk core. According to the user manual, it does support a 2.8 GHz Pentium 4, but I'm gonna use the 2.66 for the time being just to test the system, and later I'll switch over to the 2.8 GHz Pentium 4 for some future Windows 98 projects. So let's put together a quick test bench, which is using a box, I'll put the motherboard on top, 17 inch monitor, XFX power supply, and a cheap Pentium 4 cooler from eBay. The board turns on, we're using the onboard GPU and everything works fine. Now there's something special about the AGP port, it's universal. So usually when I have a motherboard with universal AGP, I use a Diamond uh, TNT2 video card because that video card will not work on newer motherboards that only support the 1.5 volt standard. In this machine, it worked, so that was, that was fine. So the next test is using a Voodoo 3 and that also worked fine. So that's really awesome. A fast Pentium 4 board with universal AGP is always handy. Now I've got an idea of what I'm going to do with this board in a future video. Something to do with a very iconic video card that is highly collectible. Have a guess in the comment section of what this might be. And to make sure that everything works, I'm gonna install Windows 98. I'm hooking up the 120 gigabyte hard drive and an optical drive. Booting from the Windows 98 CD, deleting the existing partition, we're creating a new FAT32 partition, then we're formatting it, and of course we're installing Windows 98. And once that's done, I'm installing the AGP drivers, the ID drivers, 
and also the USB 2.0 drivers. So everything seems to be running great. Here I am benchmarking some stuff for a future video. So there you have it guys. There's always something interesting in the machine. This one was no different. To me the highlights are the universal AGP motherboard and the 120 gigabyte IDE drive. But what do you think? And that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I shall see you soon with another video.